Welcome to Training Industry Quarterly Electronic Magazine, Winter Edition 2012 podcast of the article, User Generated Content, by Don Duquette. In 2011, social learning commanded our attention and became fully integrated into our personal and professional lives, changing the way we communicate on a daily basis. Learning and development organizations have embraced social media as an important part of informal learning, moving beyond justifying its value to building the infrastructure to capture and manage it. In fact, according to Burson and Associates, more than 72% of companies believe that their most valuable learning approaches are informal. Every day we conduct informal learning by the water cooler, over lunch or through online social networks. These social networks can be outside the firewall, like YouTube or Wikipedia or inside the firewall like the United States Department of State's Diplopedia that provides State Department employees with a wealth of information on international relations. In all cases, the goal of these sites is to capture and leverage information that can be used later for informal learning. Capturing the knowledge inside a subject matter expert's SME's head and getting it stored in a database that can be searched and retrieved by individuals who need that knowledge is the foundation of informal learning. Another important aspect of informal learning is allowing SMEs to rapidly create training programs. This practice is referred to as user-generated content. The advent of user-generated content has marked a shift among learning and development organizations from creating online content to providing opportunities for SMEs to publish their own content. This content can be published to the LMS, Learning Portal, or any other corporate portal that can be easily accessed. Transferring knowledge faster and at a lower cost. The ability to capture and distribute user-generated content in a self-service approach, whether in text, audio, or video formats, offers the fastest means for transferring information to learners at the lowest cost. The content is typically monitored and evaluated by the user community through comments, ratings, and flagging, allowing quick feedback on errors. The net result of user-generated content is more timely knowledge transfer at a significantly lower cost. So, where do you go from here? Today, for the majority of learning and development organizations, speed to delivery is critical. If your SMEs have the tools and processes and are currently producing user-generated content that is being distributed to learners without the long development time required for formal learning programs, congratulations! If you don't know where to start or are stuck implementing your user-generated learning program, then continue reading. Gathering Key Elements for User-Generated Content The two key elements of a successful user-generated content development program are that SMEs understand the fundamentals of instructional design and then that they have access to tools to create learning content. Die-hard instructional designers will shiver at the thought of short-circuiting the design process. But the heart of user-generated content is rapid development with basic instructional design. We are all familiar with the instructional design model that consists of analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation, ADDIE. This process is too cumbersome for a user-generated content development program and needs to be modified to suit the needs of rapid content development. The figure below shows the modification of the instructional design process. In this model, Envision replaces analysis, and Submit is used in place of implementation. The series of blocks and the gaps between them indicate the amount of time it would take to develop a course using the normal instructional design process. The blocks represent the time spent by the learning and development organization working to develop the course. The gaps represent the typical wait times in a normal design and development process for such items as SME availability, waiting for source content, and final approvals. These wait times cause a typical development cycle that may have 15 to 30 days of real work to stretch into three months of development. When you implement a user-generated content process, the majority of those wait times are eliminated, resulting in short, intense blocks of development from the SME and a net reduction in development time by 50%. In order for a user-generated content program to be successful, the SME must understand this modified instructional design process. This understanding can come from a quick online training course that each SME would be required to take prior to submitting user-generated content for publishing, or an online reference card that each SME would have access to. 
Each phase in the user-generated instructional design process is explained below. Envision phase. In this phase, SMEs should be thinking about two things, the vision for the training program and the problem you're trying to solve with it. Once they know this, then they are ready to start designing a course, preferably including scenarios that establish context and performance challenges. Design phase. In the design phase, the SME should develop an outline for the course with your training vision in mind. It should indicate the main points of the course, as well as the subtopics under each main point. These outlines can be formal or informal. For shorter, less complex courses, a few informal notes jotted down may be enough. But longer courses are too big to organize mentally, and the SME will need a more systematic plan to organize the main points and subtopics of the course. Preparing an outline will help the SME think over the objectives for the course, consider them from several perspectives, and devise or revise an organizational plan appropriate to the scope, topic, and intended audience. Regardless of the degree of formality, however, the function of an outline is to help SMEs consider the most effective way to say what they want to say. The SME should now be able to bring the course to life quickly using the design outline along with existing materials and the SME's knowledge to fill in any gaps. A best practice for helping SMEs develop a compelling course is to have them frame it like they're telling a story. The SME needs to keep that same mindset and create a course in a constructive format that describes a sequence of events. During this phase, the SME will need access to the right tools. The tools will differ depending on the delivery modality. But we cannot expect SMEs to become experts on course creation tools, so they need to be simple to use. For online courses, tools like Articulate Presenter or Adobe Captivate are easy to use and require no upfront training to get started. They will allow an SME to take a PowerPoint presentation and quickly turn it into a flash-based course, complete with audio. This saves time and enables the SMEs to develop and review the courses online in the context the learners will see it in. You can kick the content up a notch if you provide the SMEs with pre-configured PowerPoint templates. You can create these templates in-house or get them directly from Microsoft at no cost, complete with backgrounds, pictures, and pre-chosen fonts and colors. For video courses, the SME will need access to a video camera, one like the Flip camera, recently discontinued by Cisco but still available for purchase, is compact, inexpensive, and produces high-definition video that can be downloaded directly from the camera to a PC. The Learning and Development Group can purchase several and allow them to be checked out. One known SME attaches the video camera to the dashboard of his car, and while driving into work in the morning, he records a 15-minute segment on his area of expertise. These morning drive segments are one of the most popular courses in the company. Another easy way to produce user-generated content is to have the SME conduct an online training program through the company's existing platform, WebEx, Live Meeting, Citrix, and record it. A best practice for these programs is to assign the SME a producer during the presentation. A producer is typically a learning and development professional who is an SME in the tool being used. The producer can assist the SME with the initial preparation of the slide deck, and polling questions that will be used during the presentation. This frees up the SME to focus on the actual delivery of the subject matter without the need to master the functionality in the tool. The goal at the end of the development phase is to ensure content is accurate, key questions are answered, and the course maintains a focus on the final vision. Submit phase. Once the course has been developed, it is time for the SME to submit it to the Learning and Development Group for final processing and delivery. A key decision point in this phase is to determine the level of review that will be done on this user-generated content. Practices vary widely here, with some organizations doing no review while others perform an extensive review process. A best practice in this phase would be, at a minimum, to review the course to ensure that it works, that it is instructionally effective and fulfills the needs of the stakeholders. The review should also include a basic quality assurance test to ensure all functionality and links work, a thorough proofread, and a test of the course in the delivery environment, that is, LMS, LCMS, portal. For captured presentations and videos, some quick editing might be required to ensure the content is engaging to the audience and that it produces the results the SME envisioned. 
For more detailed reviews, an instructional designer would review the course and determine if the content answers the following questions. Can learners now perform the tasks the SME envisioned they should? Can they put into action the steps necessary to maximize their effectiveness? Did the course influence their behavior and motivate them to apply the methods? Staying future ready with user-generated content. As companies work hard to stay ahead of competition and continuously innovate products and services, it becomes increasingly important to quickly educate your workforce. User-generated content will play a big role in this initiative. However, user-generated content is not the answer to all our development problems. There is still a big place in each organization for a formal development process that makes use of all the instructional design principles. Each organization needs to find the right balance for its own needs. Don Duquette is Executive Vice President of the Learning Solutions Group and Officer for GP Strategies. Takeaways More than 72% of companies believe their most valuable learning approaches are informal. Informal learning developed by SMEs reduces cost and time to delivery. The traditional ADDI development process needs to be revised to accommodate user-generated content development. The revised development process can reduce development time by up to 50%. User-generated content development tips. Provide SMEs with easy-to-use tools. Train SMEs on content development processes. Outline the course before you start developing it. Structure the course like you're telling a story. Keep your audience interested from frame to frame. Consider the training program's overall vision and the business problem it's trying to solve throughout the development process. You've been listening to User-Generated Content by Don Duquette. For more podcasts and articles like this, visit www.trainingindustry.com. Thanks for listening. I'm John Sherlock.